Hey, what's up? This is Joe. I'm uh, camped out beside uh, Lake Chapala in the state of Jalisco. I've been here for a couple of weeks, kind of exploring this place. It's been pretty interesting, as you'll see in this video and some of the videos to come. So I'm just getting ready to leave this place and head back up to Mazatlan, where I'll be spending the holidays with Lily and her son, Fernando. But I wanted to make this video to show you the journey of how I got here. Basically, I left Mazatlan, I think like the 5th of December, through the tropical jungle terrain of, uh, of Nayarit. I went on some off-road uh, trails out there looking for hot springs that ended up being a whole other adventure, which you'll see in this video. And then through the uh, the enormous expanses of uh, the agave fields that they have in the state of Jalisco. That's like one of the main things that uh, the state of Jalisco is famous for. With that being said, happy holidays. Thank you guys for watching. And uh, if you enjoy this video, please hit like and subscribe. And as always, there's an optional donate link in the drop box if you'd like to contribute to this project. Otherwise, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the road. After spending the month of November in Mazatlan, I decided to head south and explore a few places I'd never been before. Over the past year, I'd spent quite a bit of time in Sinaloa and felt like I knew the place. Nevertheless, it was good to be back out on the road. In particular, I wanted to see more of Nayarit and wind my way through the immense agave fields to Jalisco where just south of Guadalajara was an enormous freshwater lake which had been drawing in gringos for decades, Lake Chapala. I made it my mission to go down there and see it for myself. The state of Nayarit has in the past harbored a violent reputation for being an epicenter in the production of narcotics. In my younger and wilder years, I knew this place by name. So strong were my associations that I had mixed feelings about coming for the first time last year, now being much more cleaned up and mellow in my approach to life. I'm not sure exactly what I was expecting, but when I finally came, I found none of the insanity that I'd had built up in my head, but instead found an incredibly good-spirited, kind, and hospitable people, amazing food, and some incredible scenery. I asked a number of locals about this history and was told that the state had since done an about face and again become one of the safest in Mexico. The roads began to get more and more twisty as I inched my way through the mountainous tropical terrain. first stop on my voyage would take me all the way to a town called Compostela, one of the so-called magical towns of Mexico. freaking cool. I'm in uh, Compostela, Nayarit. They got these uh, banners, banderas as they call them, going all the way down this street. The effect is like sort of being shaded in almost, but really cool. Having fasted all morning, as is my custom on route, I stopped at a rotisseria to pick up a roasted chicken for the day's meal. I'd been to many of these throughout my travels, but this was the very first time I'd seen an electric fan used to stoke the coals. Roasted chicken in hand, I headed due west down some crazy back roads further into the mountainous jungle. It was here I'd heard about a hot spring and a camping place, but I was losing daylight fast and had to hurry.
effect of riding through this tunnel-like green canopy with the sun shining through the leaves was a truly awesome experience. It's times like these that feel so exotic you realize to yourself, you ain't in Kansas anymore. With the sun falling from the sky at a prodigious rate, I followed the map down what I hoped would be a quick hop over to the hot spring and camping place. What I found instead was the remains of an ancient cobblestone path leading deep into the jungle which went on for miles and miles. The road began to get rougher and rougher and I started to weigh the options in my head. The sun was fading fast and I'd already traveled a significant distance from the main road. Several times on the route I stopped to think, but each time decided to press on a little further and check out the conditions ahead. Buenas tardes. After what seemed like miles of trekking into the jungle, I finally checked my map. I realized I'd come less than a quarter of the way to the hot spring. This route was absolutely insane. With only minutes of daylight remaining, I made the executive decision to turn back for the main road. It's hard for me to really put into words what happened next, but I headed down the road to look for a cheap hotel. When I got there, I was treated to an unexpected and warm, authentic Mexican experience. I'd like to have been able to film it, but there are just sometimes the camera's the wrong move. I spoke with the owner of this place, who invited me inside to rest a while, while the rest of the family sat to butchering a large part of a cow on the kitchen table. Hours passed as we sat and talked. In our conversation, I learned that the property was on a large ranch with sheep, cows, goats, and buffalo. In true Mexico style, we negotiated the price of a room, and the man insisted I join him for dinner. When I mentioned the rotisserie chicken I've been lugging around since back in Compostela, he offered to keep it in the refrigerator until morning. It was then he opened up the kitchen, and I was served a plate of delicious birria, a rich, hearty stew, in this case made from lamb meat from the farm. To this little indigenous girl of the Huichol tribe, my presence here had apparently made quite an impression. Hola, que onda? Que onda, muchacha? Diria de borrego, which is sheep or lamb uh, stew with salsa, tortillas, and all kinds of good fixings. So the quality of this food is insane. Some of the best quality borrego I've ever had, uh, right from the guy's ranch. His uh, ranch is right over there. He's got turkeys, buffalo, sheep, uh, donkeys, uh, presumably whatever else, but this is one of the best 
uh, examples of birria ever. Ven para acá. My hotel out here in the state of Nayarit. And uh, this place uh, doesn't see a lot of action. I think uh, most of their business comes from the restaurant downstairs. They got the fancy spikes that are pretty common in a lot of places. You see those, sort of a burglar deterrent. I originally asked the guy if I could uh, camp out here for cheaper. I told him, look, I don't have a lot of money, but uh, you know, is it all right if I, if I camp out there? He said, you can't camp out there, but what I can do is I can give you a lower rate uh, for the room. So he knocked uh, quite a bit of money off the price. So that's like the hospitality you see here. Uh, quite a bit. After another plate of the incredibly rich sheep birria, I grabbed my rotisserie chicken and prepared to hit the road. There are instances in Mexico in which time seems to stand still. All the tensions that were present in the background fade away, the heart rate slows, and one is captivated by the surroundings. Such was this experience. And although I never found that hot spring, I'd instead had an unforgettable encounter with new friends in a beautiful and exotic place. Feeling pretty beat up from the day before and excited to get some work done on the next video, I headed about an hour east to the nearby San Pedro Lagunillas, a small town next to a lake and situated within a volcanic zone. Once in San Pedro Lagunillas, I began looking for the lake that I'd heard about, on the banks of which you were supposedly allowed to camp for free. like I'm gonna camp here tonight uh, right beside this lake apparently this place is free uh, supposedly um, I guess we'll see uh, if somebody says something or not that's dinner avocado uh, chili and uh, chicken so uh, after the Sun goes down probably set up my uh, my camp and look for the most level piece of ground I could find All right, so this is camp from last night. I'm uh, in the state of Nayarit still, uh, right next to the Jalisco border, starting to get into the Sierra Madres. This place is sort of ringed in by mountains all around. There's a big ass volcano over there. Apparently free place to camp. You know, I didn't see anybody else out here, but uh, there was a couple people came by uh, at night, sitting there drinking a beer uh, for a couple minutes and then drove off. Slept pretty good out there. You got this nice beautiful lake all sorts of different types of birds out there cow pastures there's the big volcano over there unfortunately i got some trees in the way can't really see it there we go. yep all kinds of ducks 
and lots of birds that I cannot identify. Frogs, fish jumping around in the uh, lake. The next section of the voyage would take me across the state line and into the immense agave fields of Jalisco as I worked my way southeast to Lake Chapala. As I crossed into Jalisco, I immediately began seeing the enormous fields of blue agave for which the area is famous. In addition, I noticed the presence of a large amount of basalt or compressed volcanic ash. I wondered if this volcanic rock had some kind of an impact on the soil composition and if it had created just the right growing conditions for the blue agave. Another one of the so-called magical towns is Tequila, the place from which the drink gets its name. <laughs> Extremely popular with tourists seeking to cut loose and see the production process, the blue agave is celebrated everywhere you look. After I got my bearings, I pushed on past Tequila. Still tired from the trek through Nayarit a couple days before, I headed to the less touristy town of La Arena, where I found a tiny room and stopped for an order of carnitas. This is the place you want to get your, uh, your carnitas. Provecho. Es que quisiera un kilo mixto. Okay. Mezcla ¿Sí? con, uh, con todos, con, con todos. especialmente chicharrón. Adhering again to my usual fasting routine for half the day while riding, I ordered an entire kilo of carnitas. It was definitely too much, but I knew that any leftovers of the salty pork would keep for a long time without refrigeration. So this is one example of uh, a place. I left my GoPro uh, in the hotel room. And uh, I said, yeah, I'm not gonna need my GoPro, so I didn't bring it. Uh, and then I come upon this, which is just absolutely covered with these old skulls and horns and uh, all kinds of stuff like this. this. I headed back to the hotel with my enormous bag of carnitas, worked on the computer a bit, and rested up for the morning. And I'm in uh, the state of Jalisco and uh, on my way to uh, Lake Chapala, which is actually just south of Guadalajara. Uh, it's kind of an interesting city. I'm just kind of looking for something a little more low key. So I'm not going into Guadalajara. Uh, I'm just checking out Lake Chapala, uh, which supposedly has uh, some pretty interesting towns around it. There are several towns around Lake Chapala, but I'd heard rumors of an enormous campground on the western side near a town called 
Ocotepec. I pressed on in a route that would take me through the country and around the crazy traffic of Guadalajara.